Hello, I'm Catello, I'm a 3D designer from Italy, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you my workflow for lighting 3D dot studio characters inside of Cinema 4D and Octane. I'm going to show you first uh, the basic techniques and how I like to set up my lighting, and then I'm going to show you some breakdown of more complex scenes. Let's get started. Okay, now we are in that studio, so we can load our Genesis 8 basic male figure. I like to work into the smooth shaded viewport, not the texture one. And first thing I usually do is to make sure I've selected my whole figure and I'm in the whole section of my partners tab. For the figure and type bodybuilder and move the first slider up a tiny bit. So I can modify and customize my characters a bit. Then I move the body with the details all the way up to 100. So I'm sure I can work after in, in Cinema 4D and with some cool lights, we can make all these tiny details to pop up more. Then I reduce the body with the sides a tiny bit. And with the emaciated settings, I make sure I can bring back my figure almost to its previous volume, but without losing all this nice detail. Now we can work on, on some pose. I usually start from the shoulders, but it depends from pose to pose. You can also like choose from a variety of literally hundreds of cool posts, either the free ones or the paid ones from the from the Dot Studio store. We can also work on one side of the of the figure first. And then later, using the symmetry tool, we can have a complete pose. Now we can click on the left hand, shift to Y selecting root, propagation recursive, and in this case, direction left to right. So we now have a symmetric pose, except for the information of the hand node, but we are going to pick this up. Now we can work on some details and in actually breaking up the symmetry to make it more natural. I usually tend to uh, use the symmetry tool just to speed up my posing and then I like to break it down and make it not symmetrical or not even. bringing the right shoulder a tiny bit behind. So we can start to twisting the torso from this bottom piece all the way up to the upper chest. Then we can turn the head starting from the lower neck, the upper neck, and the head itself.
and then we can twist the hip through the pelvis node and again like breaking the symmetry we can now work on fixing the fist pose So we are now radiating to export this this one. Make sure we have uh, the whole figure selected. File export. Pose one. These are my default settings. Nothing too crazy or too fancy. And now we can move on to Cinema 4D. Now that we are in Cinema 4D, we can start bringing our pose in, deleting all the dust material, renaming our pose, loading a camera. I like to work with the focal length between a tele and a super tele, something like uh, 180 to 220 millimeter. We can load uh, a plane and an octane daylight. Now I like to set up my octane daylight power all the way down to zero. So we have a pitch black scene that we can light with custom mirror light. One thing I like to do at this stage is actually moving my main light source away from the camera, turn down the intensity and start to thinking of I want to frame my characters so I can maybe uh, load up some grid to help me trying to find a nice composition something like this might work Then click on check camera updates to let Octane stop checking the camera updates so I can move freely out of my camera without losing the ability of know what's going on on the Octane Live Viewer. Now we can start building our system. So the basic idea is to have our light source emitting photons of light through some basic slits. So we can load up our scene with two planes or actually one plane and then a copy of it and creating some narrow path for the light to shine through. We can align it roughly to where we want uh, the light to, to be, where we want the light path to be. Let's say we want to illuminate more of this area here, the main focus on the end on the upper chest. And then we can move away the light but bringing in more power something like 300 works nice oh we can actually 
make sure we delete our a lashes or a safer method because we are not sure if you were if we want to texture it and how we want to texture it so we might don't want to lose the ability to texture the eyelashes if we completely delete it like this on a mesh basis so i can made i can make uh, an octane material and uncheck everything except the opacity set it to zero so we have a completely transparent material and load it into the eyelashes slot so if we uncheck again our camera we can see that too now we have the base mesh of the eyelashes but we know actual uh, eyelashes in into the octane live, live viewer back again to our main camera uncheck the camera update so we can move freely and that's basically our super 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 simple setup that can be played around with to achieve some pretty nice result if we move the lights up close we need to bring down the intensity of course and the cone of light will be wider if we do the opposite the cone of light that shines and pass through these lids will be narrower and we need to increase the light a bit proportionally we can now start playing and actually kind of painting with the lights how we want to we can also make a group of containing the two blocking pieces and the light and maybe even duplicate we can move the anchor point of the new null object we we created on the car on the on the items on the object we we want to our light to focus on and then we can basically move as you can see now we have two fairly similar light source but we can see that uh, the lights coming from these lights is actually bouncing on these blocking planes and hitting our figure in the back so we can create dark diffuse material to prevent this from happening basically we can also make sure that the also the other two block pieces are made of the same material it's not gonna make a huge difference in this case but when you have multiple light sources and you 
are doing this kind of uh, setup of this light setup, you may want your blocking planes to have a pitch black materials. We may want to reframe our character a bit. In this case, I'm going to use another kind of grid to make sure I have my space filled up in a even way, but yet not symmetrical. And yes, that's basically it. I really hope you enjoyed the first part of this tutorial. In the next one, I'm gonna cover some breakdowns of more complex scene that feature the same lighting system and lighting style. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos. I'll see you in the next one.